Who is the most frightening serial killer in your opinion? Part 7. Please subscribe and help us grow our channel thread tonic. Count 1. Alexander Spesitsev. This is a Russian maniac who brutally raped, killed, and ate children and women right in the apartment. His grandmother lured victims to him. She asked the victim for help, brought him to the door, and dragged him into the apartment, where hell began. When he was caught, a wounded, dying girl was found in the bathroom, who dismembered the corpse of her friend. The grandmother trapped three girls at a time. The other girl had already been eaten. A couple of days later, the girl who survived then died. What scared me about this maniac is that I could easily imagine myself falling into this trap of his grandmother. Account 2. In Austrian prison, there is the so-called Ice Princess, who killed two of her exes and put them in concrete in her cellar. She has gotten a life sentence, but the thought of her makes me shiver. Account 3. East Area Rapist, who went on to become the Golden State Killer and we now know as Joseph James D'Angelo. This guy would stalk his victims for weeks leading up to the attacks, along with many other houses, while he was working as a police officer. When he attacked, he was relentless and would stay in the house for hours messing with his victims. When cornered, he would kill without a second thought. Account 4. I was a child in England when the Moors murders took place. The Moors murders were carried out by Ian Brady and Myra Hindley, between July 1963 and October 1965, in and around Manchester, England. The victims were five children. As a kid growing up in England at the time, the part that I remember was that these creeps tape recorded one child as they tortured and killed them, and then sent the tapes to the mother. True psychopaths. They were the most odious and pernicious scum that ever suffered to crawl upon the face of this earth. Account 5. Ward Weaver murdered two teen girls, Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis, just down the street from where I used to live. Very creepy, because he put their bodies in an oil drum, buried it, and cemented over it. He was interviewed about the news on disappearances before he became a suspect. Account 6. H.H. H. Holmes. He built a giant hotel with death traps in it. It's truly horrifying. Despite his confession of 27 murders, including some people who were verifiably still alive, Holmes was convicted and sentenced to death for only one murder, that of business partner and accomplice Benjamin Pitzer. It is believed he also killed three of Pitzer's children, as well as three mistresses, the child of one mistress and the sister of another. Much of the lore attached to Holmes concerns the so-called Murder Castle, a three-story building he commissioned in Chicago. Details about the building, along with many of his alleged crimes, are considered exaggerated or fabricated for sensationalistic tabloid pieces, with some accounts estimating his body count could be as high as 133 or even 200. Many of these inaccuracies have persisted due to the combination of ineffective police investigation and hyperbolic yellow journalism of the period, which are often cited as historical record. Account 7. Derek Toddley. I lived there during his killing spree. Our PE classes turned to self-defense. Women were told not to wear your hair up, he can grab it. Don't wear a skirt easier access. Carry mace. Carry your keys between your fingers, arm yourself. His victims were of different races and vast age differences. He killed in multiple cities. No one was safe. And their murders were unbelievably gruesome. I'll never forget the day he was arrested. Every woman in South Louisiana breathed a sigh of relief. Account 8. Personally, I find serial killers fascinating, so I'll share a story my mom told me a while back. My mother grew up in California and lived in a very peaceful neighborhood, as there were lots of families and elders. When she was around 10, sometime in the mid-80s, she was woken up by a faint noise coming from her brother's room. She has three that share the same room. At first, she wasn't too concerned about it, but she couldn't sleep as it kept going. She finally got up and walked into her brother's room. She saw a hand reaching in through the window and trying to unlock the door. The way the house was set up is that the windows in her brother's room had no glass, just bars, as it was meant to be a sort of back room. She screamed as soon as she saw the hand and watched in terror as a figure ran off, jumping the brick fence in the process. 
When my grandparents and uncles asked her what happened, they all thought she was crazy. But when they went outside to water the plants, she noticed a brick was missing from the fence, most likely from when the person jumped the fence. The next day, there was a report of a murder in the exact same neighborhood as her. The victims ended up being that of Richard Ramirez, the L.A. Night Stalker. To this day, she believes her and her family would have been dead had it not been for her waking up to the noise. TLDR. My mom and her family were almost victims of the Night Stalker. Account 9. Nathaniel Bar Jonah. He was a convicted serial child molester and attempted murderer. He has never actually been proven to have killed anyone, but was convicted of the attempted murder of children many times. He has also been connected to the disappearances of many young boys and girls. When police raided his home, they found coded journals that detailed his victim list and kill record, as well as accounts of the killing and eating of children. There were also recipes for chili, burgers, and pot pie that called for human meat, as well as directions for butchering human body parts. His day job was as a short-order cook. He used to hold neighborhood cookouts and serve burgers, spaghetti, casserole, and meat pies to the people in his neighborhood. There are many accounts of the neighbors that ate at these gatherings, noting that the meat had an odd taste. He's the prime suspect in the disappearances of many children. Fortunately, he died in prison in 2008. Account 10. Denei Propetrovsk Maniacs. They killed 21 people, one of which was pregnant, and they cut the unborn child out of her womb. They were only 19 years old when they committed the murders. Account 11. My father was murdered when I was three by a woman named Jeannie Braun. His name's Jeremy Burt. Mine's Mackenzie. Look it up if you don't believe me. Not only did she get away with it, but she did it again and killed her husband. He went out for milk one day and never returned. She tried to do it a third time, but her latest husband went to a hospital before she could finish the job. They divorced, and she forced him to sign a contract stating he wouldn't talk about anything that happened during their marriage. She was a lawyer, so she could genuinely ruin his life. If you want the whole story about how my father went missing, I can write it out. I just doubt anyone will see this. She's still walking free. I'm 17 now, and I'll be 18 in March. She may not be a serial killer or a famous killer at that, but she ruined my life and took my father from his mother, sister, brother, our entire family with no remorse. And she's still walking free. Account 12. Probably to late, but Carl Panzram. Went around the country killing and causing as much pain as possible to everyone he met. What disturbed me the most was that his one goal was causing as much hurt as possible. He raped kids in front of their siblings, started fires, all sorts of crap. Account 13. David Berkowitz, a.k.a. Son of Sam. He was a really sick man, crazy to the point of no return. Shot and killed a lot of young couples in New York, he chose his victims seemingly randomly, and after getting caught, he blamed his neighbor's dog. That is, the dog talked to him and influenced his actions. Account 14. I live in Canada. The most disturbing shit that's happened in the last few years was the killer Bruce MacArthur. He killed a lot of people and hid their remains in people's plant pots in their gardens. From what's been found so far, he was a gardener. Account 15. Paul Bernardo. I was 14. One of his victims was found beside a road I'd driven down a few hours before. Another victim was a friend of a friend. It was so local and the victims were so normal. I remember our high school soccer coach figuring out how to get everyone home without anyone being left alone after practices. It was like the game with the fox, the goose, the wheat, and the river crossing. 